Aloha! Welcome to our first video that's being made to support our new Linux forensics book. First ever book published by Pentester Academy. And our intention with these videos is just, just to give you a little bit of extra information, show you a couple of things that might be a little bit easier to see in video format than in book format in order to help you get the most out of your book. So this video is going to be all about how you can easily create a response thumb drive using a virtual machine and this will allow you to create a thumb drive without tying up your machine for hours while you download packages. So I hope you enjoy it. So here I want to show you how you can boot that thumb drive into VirtualBox. And this will allow you to update that system without having to tie up one of your computers for hours while you're trying to install SIFT. So here's the command. You're using an internal command inside of VirtualBox, and you're using the tool VirtualBox Manager, VBox Manage, and you tell it, I would like to run an internal command. Notice it's internal commands. And the command is called create raw vmdk. You give it a file name for your output. And here I'm just putting it in my VirtualBox main directory. And I give it a raw disk. So this will take dev sdb and it will create a vmdk file, a virtual hard disk file for the device dev sdb. Now, a couple of things to note. This assumes that your device is dev sdb. As you know, sometimes if you plug and unplug, it might become dev sdc, etc. So something to note. The other thing to notice is it's sdb, not sdb1. It's not the partition because you need that bootloader in order for this to work. So I enter the command and I'm running this as root because if I don't run it as root, it's going to give me permission problems and it's going to be very unhappy with me if I try to run this. So this is one of those cases where it's just easiest to run it as root. You could try to run this command as root and then change the owner of the file that's output from it. Uh, I found that that is a little tricky because then when you try to run VirtualBox, that user does not have access to the raw device. So once you've done that, go ahead and run up VirtualBox create a new system and I'm going to call this one Linux Live. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to give it a, a decent amount of RAM. If I don't, it will be very, very slow. I'm going to use an existing hard drive and I'm going to browse on over to wherever I put that USB VMDK file. And I'm going to click on Open and I'm going to click on Create. Now you're almost done. One little tweak that you might have to do. If you click on settings and you go to system, you might need to check on enable EFI. It says special OS's only. So apparently Linux is a special OS according to the folks at Oracle. So once you do that, I should be able to go ahead and start. And this is coming up on another screen and I'm going to try Ubuntu without installing. And it's giving me some warnings, but sure enough, I'm getting Ubuntu installed. Or rather, I'm not installing Ubuntu. I have a live version that's being installed. And why is this important? Well, again, this is actually writing to my physical thumb drive. So if I look at my thumb drive, I can see that the lights are flashing on it right now. And of course, with as with all live Linux systems, it is a bit slow and it will eventually boot to my desktop, and here it is. Once I'm here, if I want to install all of those SIFT additions, those additional repositories we talked about before, and perhaps some other things, I can access the internet using my browser, Firefox, or whatever you would like to install. And then I can have a live Linux thumb drive that is running something with a bunch of forensic stuff on it.